Good morning and welcome to the Elevate Renatus team call. This is your host, Keely Austin, and I am excited to bring out our trainer today. Bill Predabon is someone who I have had the privilege of getting to know over the last three and a half years as we are both working in Scottsdale together. And I'm really, really honored to be able to get to take after him because he is a phenomenal leader. He sets an example of what it really means to be a product of the product for, for Renatus. He is working on, I don't know, six to eight deals at a time, I feel like. Correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, but you've always got multiple deals going on simultaneously, which is just a, a great way to lead the team and show people how it's done and that it's possible to be creating deals just left and right. And on top of that, he is building a team and he is on the, um, the pit team with the company. So he's a President's Advisory Council member in training, which is a big deal. So just some of Bill's background. Before Renatus, he was a pro skier for 10 years in Vail, Colorado, and he realized he was not qualified to do much else. He then got into franchise, and due to lack of knowledge on that, he ended up losing everything, and that cost him the whole business. In 2007, he heard about real estate investing he didn't have education, and like a lot of us have, have tried to do, he tried to do this on his own. He ended up upside down in over $400,000 during the 2008 crash. He then found Renatus and made eight times more in his first year in Renatus than the previous year as a loan officer. Ever since then, Bill has completed over 140 deals. He's grossed multiple seven figures in real estate. And as I mentioned, he's a marketing leader, a pit team member. And we're very fortunate to have him as our trainer today. Good morning, Bill. How are you doing, Ke Keely? Doing well. Thank you. Good morning. Loud and clear? Yes, you sound great. Good deal. Let's kick on this video, I guess, so that way people can relate. <clears throat> I forgot to do that last time. Welcome, everybody. Keely Beals, thanks for, uh, man doing what you do, handling adversity and taking on issues when things happen and uh, just getting up every morning and getting this thing kicked off with uh, a good video and a good, uh, generally speaking, and just, you know, great introductions. Just really appreciate the opportunity to work with you as well. And, and um, I love your introductions. I love the personal touch to it. I love how you um, are able to relate to the speaker and then, uh, you know, get that out to the people. I think that's a cool way to introduce people. So thanks. Thanks for the introduction. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for all you do in Scottsdale Renatus as well. And uh, I'm excited to train. Today's going to be good. Hopefully every day is good. We're a little light on folks. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's just Tuesdays. Maybe it's me. <laughs> but we're at 55. Don't forget to text your team. I texted my team earlier today and who knows. So um, thanks for you guys for being here. Uh, where am I? All right, there we go. And uh, I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful to be able to have the opportunity that Christian and Michael gave me to train on this on this call every week. Um, it is exciting and uh, and it's an honor. And uh, I'll tell you, you guys, and you heard me say this before. Um, I listen to this call every day as well. So uh, when I'm not training, I'm 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 learning. I love learning too. So. Oh, you're probably right, Lisa. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Lee. So this is going to be cool. Um, folks, remember, all right, number one is 760-533-3141. That is my cell phone, 760-533-3141. I owe a return call to, oh my God, you guys, I found this message. Patricia, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to get back to you today. Because I missed you, Kalia, about a week ago. Uh, no, it's almost two weeks ago, and we just did not connect. But we talked before. Anyway, folks, call me, text me, whatever. If I miss you, uh, you can absolutely uh, text me again or call me again. So I know it's urgent, and I will get back to you. Sometimes my texts get buried, and I try to leave them um, unanswered yet, so I know to go back and look for them. And that's what I did yesterday. I was like, oh my god, what are these other three texts that are not responded to yet? So. Um, with that, though, you guys feel free to, to reach out. Um, and then also, if you, during this want to call, want to um, go ahead and uh, 
chat in the uh, questions, uh, thoughts or comments that I can relate to or uh, share my opinion and my advice on. I mean, although it, it's not always the, you know, uh, you don't have to take it necessarily, but I can share my experience with you, then uh, feel free to come off me at star six, whatever you need to do, um, and or text it in the chat and I'll answer it. You can interrupt anytime. Um, so cool, this call's about you guys. So this is gonna be fun, let's see. Uh, yesterday, Michael's call was really good. And I'm going to try to play a little bit off of that. Um, his calls are always good, right? But, uh, you know, he, he kind of, um, he kind of talked a little bit to, you know, what to do in coming up in, um, in Thanksgiving and, uh, and the holidays coming up. And then he also, if you were listening closely, he, he talked about the how to do it and how he did it. And the how is like the actual physical act. Right. And the what is like, OK, what are you going to think about doing? How are you going to plan to do this? Um, what is it you want to accomplish um, when you go to your dinners and you're and you're with family and friends and stuff like that? So just if you did not listen to that call or if you did, perhaps you want to listen to it again. I think it's pertinent to this week specifically and which will soon be in the next weeks in December. Um, so I think it was a good call. And to be honest, I've, I've heard him uh, I've heard him say it, that story before. And it's still, I learned something yesterday. So a good call. I'm going to call this call, uh, <laughs> why we, why we don't and why we do. <laughs> I'll get, to, I'll explain that in a minute. Um, but I mean, I'm going to, I think I'm able to share a little bit about literally why we, um, like it's easier said than done. All right. It just is a fact. You're going to be all stoked to get to your, uh, Thanksgiving events and family outings and you are gonna to want to talk to people and you will screw it up. I can't say the F word, uh, but you will do that. And then you will, um, and then you, or you'll just clam up and you just won't and it's cool. All right, I'm gonna tell you why it's cool and then why it's not cool. All right, so I'm gonna share with you this. Um, I'm gonna share with you this story. So I love, I did not watch Friends growing up. Um, and those of you people that are under 30, uh, like me, uh, you probably have to watch it in a rerun, <laughs> but if you haven't seen friends, you should watch it. Uh, I don't know, eight, 10 seasons, whatever it is. It's just a phenomenal, I don't know, sitcom. It's just ridic ridiculous. So I watch it all the time now and it's easy, mindless stuff at the very end of the night. I don't go to bed till around between 11 and 1230. So I usually watch a few episodes, uh, or one episode at night when I'm kicking back before I go to bed. And, um, and so, uh, last night's episode was the first one. And, and some of you know this, but, um, so if you don't know friends, I can't explain it all, but Ross is one of the stars of these friends and Ross just got divorced. His, his wife became lesbian, gets divorced. And then Rachel, um, which is Jen Aniston comes on the, on the show. Right. And she's just getting walked out of her marriage at the, you know, at the altar, left her guy at the altar and all that stuff. But at the end of the show, you guys check this out. So Joey, uh, is a studly guy. Uh, how you doing? Right. That's my favorite. Right. Keely, you see me. Say, how you doing? So, uh, Joey is the Italian stud actor on the show. And so he's telling Ross, you know, this is a great beginning. You know, Ross is in the dumps. Um, Right. And, and we're going to relate this to your business. I promise you. Uh, so cool. So Ross is in the dumps and they're helping him build furniture as a new apartment because he's got to move out of, from his wife and he's moving into this new apartment. They're building furniture and Ross is in the dumps and, you know, he brings out a beer. He's like, this is my wife's favorite beer. And he's all crying and just a sap. And, uh, and Joey's like, whatever, dude, you know, there's so many fish in the sea. It's like a great opportunity, you know? And, um, and Joey coins this phrase, right? And it's, 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 uh, he's talking about grabbing a spoon and there's all these spoons that you, you know, with different flavors and you get to test them all like at an ice cream shop. Right. And, and so he's talking about chicks, obviously, and women and Joe and Ross is like, you know, what if there's, I only want one spoon and there's only one woman. And he's like, one woman, there's not one woman for everybody. And, um, and, uh, and so, that part of the episode goes on and you haven't seen it. It's, it's pilot, pilot episode, right? Episode series, uh, season one, episode one, see it. So here's what happens. So that's, that's that prelude to the ending. 
of the first episode, and it's it's um, Joey trying to explain to Ross that there's all these chicks in the sea, and there's you know there are different flavors of these spoons, and you got to grab yourself a spoon. And Ross is opposed to it. He's not open to the concept. He's down in the dumps, right? And you guys get it. So at the end of the show, Rachel comes on to the show, and uh, Jennifer and Aniston, right? And so she's uh, Monica's, Ross's sister's best friend from high school. So she's back in the picture, and this is episode one, so you assume she's been gone forever, and these friends were all hanging out, and then she joins the group. And she comes in, and she's getting divorced, or she doesn't get married. She's in her wedding dress and all that stuff. So you fast forward to the end of the, end of the first show, and she goes, um, Ross had always had a crush on her in high school. So he remembers her and whatever. And they're hanging out at the end one night and Monica goes to bed and, um, and Ross is talking to her and they're kind of getting along. And, and he goes, and he goes, Hey, Rachel, you know, would you, and he kind of stutters a little bit. And he's like, would you, would you mind if I called you and asked you out sometime? And she says, yeah, um, sure, maybe you could call me. And he's like, cool, well, maybe I'll call you then. And then Rachel goes to bed. So it's just this one line, and Ross is just a different person. And he's fired up, and he's happy, and he's just feeling good. And he's walking out the door, he's leaving the apartment, he's going home, and Monica comes out of the bedroom, and she goes, she looks at him, she notices this different air about him, and she said, what's up, Ross? And he says, I just grabbed a spoon. So here's what we're gonna do. I hope you followed that. And he was, it was awesome, right? And he took a chance. Now here's the cool thing. This is why I'm relating this, is that, Grabbing your Granada spoons and, and talking to someone about Renatus is not instant gratification. Ross did not ask her out then. He just changed his mindset. Like when you watch this series, this show, and you watch episode one, Megan, I know I love it, right? It's crazy. And, um, and, and he is just down and out. And the last thing he wants to do is grab a freaking spoon, right? He does not want to test the waters, lick the flavors or anything like that. But things change. And they don't, it's not like he's going to go marry her overnight. But what you'll understand is that the coolest thing about Friends and this story is that this is a, it takes a lifetime not a lifetime. It takes time for this relationship to develop over time. And you'll see it if you ever watch Friends. But it worked. Your spoons that you grab in Renatus are not overnight. There will be a time frame. There's timing for everybody. And you've heard the stories across the trainings, across your Renatus career. You know, I worked on this person for two years, or I introduced them two years ago, or they listened to the radio station ad five years ago, whatever it is. Right. And we hear that. But. But your. Your opportunity at Christmas and the holidays is to grab spoons. It's to open the door to the possibility of what the future may be hold for that individual. So let's talk about why knowing what we know. Right. Knowing listening to what, what we heard and learned from from Michael yesterday. Right. Let's talk about why we don't do it. And, um, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you some stories about myself, right? So, like I was thinking about this yesterday. There are times with people that I, I think about that I literally, that I, I know I'm sitting there having a conversation with them. And so imagine me, right? I'm on the pit, right? I've had a little success in the marketing. Um, and, and I've had all the success in the real estate. <clears throat> and so why would I ever be, um, why would I ever not talk about it, right? I've got to have exactly know what I'm talking about. I got, I got an opening line. I got an elevator speech. I got all, not always true, you guys. 
like the same resistance that you have, we all have it, right? So people at the top, eh, the top's not a good word. People like Michael, people that are making more money than we are, the money that we want to make in Renatus, that are changing more lives than we are, that are changing their own life, right? They just, they simply do more of the things that you know to do more often, right? That's it. They're sharing probably three, four, eight, ten times more than we are. So, so like if I think about it sometimes, I literally can be with somebody. And one of the reasons that I don't think about it or I don't, I don't act, I don't ask for a phone number, I don't ask what they do for a living, or even if they ask me what they, I do for a living, I'll say, yeah, I'm a flipper, uh, I'm a real estate investor, I invest in real estate like Dan Clark says, right? I'll say something to this effect. But it's interesting because you know what I don't do? What don't I do? I don't follow it up with a question. What do you do? Have you ever thought about real estate? Other than your job, what are you most passionate about? Do you own any reinvestment? Really? Like no questions, right? And I know what to do, right? But why not? Here's why I don't, right? Number one is I don't have the freaking time. I don't want to take the time. Where, where is the conversation going to go? I'm not in the right state of mind. I don't have a pen and paper, right? Every possible excuse that I want to use, right, is going to come into my head very, very quickly and very easily. What's the loss? Nothing. I don't, I don't need to go ask them. I can ask somebody else later. I can ask him or her later. I can do it later. I can mark it later, right? So what's the big deal, right? I just don't ask them. I'm not going to get mad at myself. I'm not going to hold myself accountable for not talking to everybody right? So life goes on. You just move on to the next day, to the next hour, to the next person, to the next time. You skip it. If we start to associate loss with every individual we come across that we don't ask, put a $10,000 ticket on it. Put a $500 ticket on it. Put $500 an hour. However you want to give it some sort of value to where if you don't ask, there's a loss, right? Maybe you hold yourself accountable, right? So, so here's, here's a good reason, right? So one of the excuses could be simply, I don't want to get myself in an awkward conversation. Like I don't want to have them ask me a question that I can't answer. Or if I could answer it, do I just sit there and answer it? And then you putz out at the end, right? If you're not prepared, to get their contact information or to invite them right there to a meeting, right? And overcome some objection. If you don't have a plan, then absolutely, you're just going to skip it. It makes total sense. This is why we don't do it. This is why I, I shouldn't even say we. This is why I don't do it. Right? Thanks, Keely. You guys, it's so true. Sometimes I skip it. <laughs> why? Because I don't want to do the freaking follow-up. I don't want to waste my time with this Yahoo who's not going to do anything. They're not going to come to a freaking meeting. They're going to blow me off. They're going to say yes because they're going to make me feel good about myself and I'm going to go home and I'm going to get all excited and they're not going to take my call. Right? I'm going to go back to my rejection and it's not worth my time. I can go flip a freaking house. I'm going to the auction today at 10 o'clock. Well, I'm not going to go. My guy's going. I don't know if you guys know John Ray. He's a, uh, you probably heard about him if you ever watched Property Wars. So he's bidding on a house for me down at auction. I know I'm probably going to get it. I know what it's worth. I've been in the house. I know this house very well. And the opening bid is like some ridiculous low number. And it's a $400,000 house. And the opening bid's under fifty. dollars And uh, I hope I win this property. But I hope no one's bidding on it. I hope my guy has some influence on people bidding on it. And I'm not going to get rejected. If it doesn't, if I don't win, it's okay. Right? But I don't have to work at it. I don't have to. I made a decision. It was one time. If I want to pay enough money, I'll get the house and it's done. There you go. Right back in my comfort zone. Buy another house, flip another property, make 50 grand. I'm good to go. Bad. This is why we don't do it. This is why I don't do it, right? Another reason, right? Literally, I'm thinking to myself this. 
I'm thinking to myself, you guys, all right, if I say this, right, and I, I talk to somebody and I start to ask, hey, open my mouth, Dane Clark, Michael Huggins, what do you do? What are your, what are your uh, hobbies, right? Michael's at the dog park. Dane is talking to a friend. Uh, you heard that story this last week where he uh, met somebody at a conference and mentioned the word real estate investing. The guy was excited and, uh, you know, got his contact information right there and said, we should talk. I can introduce you to real estate. He's like, no way. Right. And Dane tells some stories and right. So I'm, I'm there. I know that it's possible. I'm talking to somebody and I can easily ask him, Hey man, have you ever thought about investing in real estate? I'm, I'm, I'm super into flipping houses. It's a great living, whatever I say. Right. And then, most likely this individual is going to say yes, right? So you're going to have a conversation. Do you have the time to have the conversation? Number one, right? So for me, let's just say I have the time. I'm going to make the time. I'm actually going to go get past my, my thing where I'm always in a hurry and I'm going to have time to have a conversation. Then what if the person starts to ask questions, right? What if the person is like, um, yeah, absolutely. I'm totally interested in real estate. I, can't, I wish I could learn how to invest. I don't know how to do it. I wouldn't even know how to begin, but my wife and I talk about it all the time. I watch the TV shows. I love it. <laughs> What's your next move, right? You're playing chess. What's your next move? If you don't know how to play chess, right? If you're not prepared to play chess, even if you did know how, you, you're not going to move. You're not going to make a move, right? You've got to be committed, right? So you have to uh, engage in another question. And then you've got to bring it to the point where at some point you're going to say, why don't you invest? What's holding you back? What are you missing? You know, if you've watched the shows, why don't you just go do it? You know, whatever the question you got to come up with, right? So you got to be prepared to come up with a question. You got to know what to say. So most of the time we just don't know what to say. So we don't say it. We, we do this training all the time, every day, but we don't know what to say, but we do know what to say. We just don't know what to say. The only reason is if you go back to that conscious, unconscious Mike thing that Michael and Dane have trained on, Christian Sadler's trained on it really well, right? And the more you do it, like tie in your shoe, it becomes consciously unconscious, right? And so you start to uh, automatically know what to say. Because if you don't put this stuff into practice, you're going to have it in your head. Your head is going to know. But the minute you start to say it, it's going to very quickly, you're, it's going to become a part of who you are, Right? But you've got to do, you've got to open up the floodgates. You've got to do it once or twice and fumble through it. So um, the, the thing is, is then you've got to have a system. You've got to have a plan on how to transition to an invite or simply, you know what, and have an out, you guys, have an out of the conversation. You know what? I've got a perfect opportunity for you or man, would I love to talk real estate with you or perhaps we could get together and have a cup of coffee and talk real estate. Obviously now is not a good time, right? And what, that has to be your out. What, you have to have something where you're not going to sit down with that person and have a one-on-one. -on -one. If you invite them to a Thursday night, they're not even prepared. Like they just met you or, you know, you're at Thanksgiving dinner. And you're like, Hey, what are you doing Thursday night? You want to get to that point where, and we're going to talk about Thanksgiving in a minute, but we're, you want to get to that point where you can, you can have, set aside and qualify for the time, right? But you haven't qualified for this time because you're having conversation with your neighbor or a family friend or someone at the doctor's office or whatever it is. And yeah, you're talking real estate and that's all normal, right? All the conversation, you guys, this is another reason why we don't, right? The conversation is normal when you're just talking about real estate, flipping houses, house shows, making money. I wish I could save in taxes, all normal. The minute you take it to the next level and you're like, hey man, want me to share with you how you can do this on your own? You want to know what I just learned? And you sound like a dork. And the guy's like, yeah, that was a good conversation right up until you made it weird. And the reason we made it weird is because we don't practice it, that part. We have the full conversation, right? Like if you think about it, you're talking about a movie, you're talking about a sporting event, you're talking about Thanksgiving dinner, cooking a turkey, and you wish people didn't cook turkeys, and maybe Donald Trump could pardon all the turkeys in the world right now, and so no one eats a turkey. I'm vegan. I'm just kidding. Um, then normal conversation, right up until you say, don't you want to learn how to be vegan? And they're like, that was weird, right? 
It's none of your business. It's none of your business, right? So we have to qualify for the time. So we have that out. We have that ability to stop the conversation, leave them with intrigue. So they're intrigued just enough for take, to take our phone call and give us their information. This is gonna be great. I can't wait to talk real estate with you. Um, I'm excited. Uh, I love, the more people I share real estate with, the more real estate deals I do or whatever you're, you're out is, right? Listen, let me get your information. I'll give you a call. I'll shoot you a text and we'll get a time that we can talk on the phone. Perfect, right? That guy or girl's relieved because now they can end this stupid conversation, right? Now it's not a stupid conversation. We guys get my point, right? Now understand something. Um, please understand this. If Michael or Dane or some of the top leaders in the country, maybe people that have been doing this longer than I talked to more people were training on this, it may be a little bit different. I'm not saying 100% that the way that I'm doing things is the right way to do it. And the way that you would have this conversation and move it to the next level, get their contact information and go and contact them when you're ready. There are going to be times when you're going to want to take that right to an invite or at least take it right into an intrigue and say, listen, if, you know, if the time was right and money wasn't an object, would you consider your options and leave them open? Right. You might have that line and use that line right there and say, yeah, what are you talking about? What do you got? Well, let me send you a video, whatever it is. Right. That's going to be up to you and your five star and the people you want to emulate, the people you want to follow, the people you want to listen to. That's up to you. Right. But all I can do is, is I've had a little success in this. I've been doing this a long time and, uh, and I'm working on it on a daily basis to become um, a top income earner in the company. So uh, these are my experiences. But uh, what I can share is most likely the things that you go through in your why we don't do this portion of this call are, are exactly why I don't do it. Like I literally don't and I don't want to I don't want to taste the spoon. Most likely because if you think about Ross, the rejection, this loss, right? It's not even the fact that he just lost it. Like he's still hurting inside. We get that. But it's like he just, he has no hope. He hasn't experienced something good, right? His experience with his wife was good for a while. And then she turned lesbian on him. And I'm joking, right? That's a person she came out. And it's not his fault. It's not her fault. It is what it is, and he has this loss. He's suffering from this loss where he still loved her. He doesn't understand it, right? And so, um, and so think about it. He's not, it's not the fact that he doesn't want another spoon. It's that he doesn't have a good relationship with another spoon because the last spoon didn't taste very good. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. I know, right? It's funny. So, and I love all. I, I just love all. And so um, it's so cool. And uh, you guys, this was like, I don't even know, 15, 20 years ago when they had that first episode. So uh, setting the trends back in the day. And so uh, we've got to think about the spoons and we've got to be willing to take a chance on the spoon. So, um, so a few, one more don't, I guess. And then we're going to get into the do and how, right? Because I want to, I want to, we're going to end on a positive note, right? The, the, the reasons we do this, the reasons we overcome that, right? And so, you know, um, it is easy for us to not do this, all right? It is easy. The reason it's easy is we don't have the success the good experience, right? The, um, we don't have the outcome that we desire yet, right? Maybe we've only had one roll up sale, maybe none. Maybe we've only made 10 grand once. Uh, whatever, whatever it is, we, we, the experience that we have desired and that we, the expectation we set has not been met. We have been failing, right? We have not succeeded in, in, trans, in, in, in transitioning folks over to the Renata cycle. We, we, we get a good response. They say, yes, they're going to come. They're excited about the conversation. They want to do real estate. You're all excited that you met them. Whatever the case is, you talk to a family member, they don't show up. They do show up. They don't go to the next event. They ghost you. They don't ghost you. They come to the next event. Then they have no money. They come to the next event and they're like, I'm not that interested. 
I'm interested, but I'm, it's not now, right? All of these things are a process, right? This is a journey. You've heard Michael say this. We have to love the process. We have to appreciate the journey. We have to expect this journey, right? And the only way to expedite it, the only way to increase it, the only way to make it better, you guys, is to do it faster, more often. Do it mucho, much more often, right? As much as we can. Um, so when I think about it, I'm like, wow. I spend a lot of time with prospects. I share with them stories. I know my stories. I know my story. I can sit there and tell them, look at what I've done. And this is how I did it. When people say to me, flat out, Bill, how did you learn how to do this? Man, if I could invest like you, I'm so busy making other people money, blah, 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 all this stuff, right? And like the minute I know the answer, I don't answer the question. I ask a question, how long are you going to be sick of this, right? I go through my own training, ask a question with a question, create intrigue, find a problem, create, bring a solution with Renatus, invite them to an event, follow up. I get it, right? And what happens at the end? They don't buy. They're still in the pipeline. I look at my pipeline, I got goals to meet, I got expectations I've set, not there, right? I, I can't control their decision all the time. What can I control? One of the things I can control, real estate. You can control your job, your family, your household, right? Your sports, your sporting events you watch, all the things you're comfortable in. You can control your animals, your kids, right? To an extent, you know what I mean? You can control the desired outcome that you have with them, that you can pick them up from a, an event, that you can take them to their events, that you can go watch their events, that you can coach their events, right? That's all in your control. That's your wheelhouse. That's your comfort zone. Boom, go back to it. Stay there. Why waste your time on something that's not going to happen? Human nature, you get beat up all the time. People don't show up. People can't fund. People don't have the money. People don't have the same desire. People tell you they want to do it. I'm 100% in. I'm going to do this and they ghost you. That's why. Why would we continue to subject ourselves to such crap? Ross and his spoon. You want to know why? This is why we do it. If you watch this episode and you see Ross when he grabbed that spoon and Rachel, Jennifer freaking Anderson said, yes, call me. And um, you could ask me out sometime maybe. His whole perspective changed. His whole attitude changed. Life got better. Life had a vision. There was a light at the end of the tunnel. There was hope. We grab spoons for hope because we know this works. We know that we spent the 20 grand because it works. Because it's the best opportunity you have. Your choices are limited. And not just yours, but 99% of the people you talk to. Limited to nothing. The system will contain them forever. They will retire broke. They will retire less than what they want to retire on. If they're fortunate enough to retire. Or they will work or they will die and they will not be financially free. It's a fact. The other day, we had a meeting. It was yesterday. I had two one-on-ones. Um, and the morning one-on-one -on -one was 10 a.m. And I was super excited about this when I got to meet um, my friend's Lee and Sandy's daughter. And I met her, uh, the other day at the, uh, I met her the other day at the Thursday night presentation. And Lee had told me that her daughter was interested. She's into marketing. You know, she hadn't been to a meeting or anything like that. He really hadn't told her much about it, but she knew they were into this, that they were doing some real estate and their lives were changing. And she's got her own career, her own fiance, just a super cool chick. And, um, they decided they were going to invite her to a meeting. 
So she came to, remember, I call it a meeting here, but we call it a presentation or five pillars, whatever you want. So she comes Thursday night and she's excited. She liked what she saw. She liked everything about it. She appreciated uh, the, the presentation. We got a chance to talk right afterwards and we set up a meeting for a follow-up on Monday, one-on-one, -on -one, right? She couldn't, she couldn't even make it to the intensive. She missed that. She had uh, other plans in her own business that she does. And, um, and so we met yesterday and she was excited about what she'd seen. She was excited about the opportunity. We went over the marketing a little bit because she's a marketer. She's a business. She wants to maybe eliminate the business that she has of her own marketing business and get into this marketing business. She's excited about real estate. Um, she's excited about working from home. A lot of positives, right? Um, had a few questions on how she was going to fund it, um, which strategy she wanted to hear about all of them. We went over some resources she had and we found the funding, right? She placed a combo order. Her parents are excited. She's in the family. She's in the Billy Goat team. Her order for a full cash combo is placed. She went through Get Funded in one day. She's already to docs. It's probably going to be done today. She'll get extra credit. She's got other resources that we've got, several other resources. We'll probably fund within the week by the end of Thanksgiving, whatever it is, um, by the end of the month. This is why we do it. The reason we do this is because there's hope. Sometimes you grab the spoon and the spoon has flavor. The spoon has meaning. The spoon has value. The spoon is another person whose life you can change, right? And the opportunity for you to meet somebody in your life that is interested in the same things you're interested in is there. And then they can become a part of something that you introduce them to. And they're gonna be forever grateful to their parents for this introduction, right? And that her, they're her parents that found this. And, and that person had an open mind and she's young. She's 26. She's got her own business. She's not broke. Right? So she didn't have to choose this, but she saw the vision. We want to work with people like us. Right? And if we don't ask people and we don't test some flavor, like if you go into an ice cream shop or, um, or anything for that matter, you flip a bar with 50 taps, you taste it. You do a wine tasting, right? You try things out. We have to try people. Not everybody's made for this. Everybody needs it, but not everybody wants it. And it's not for everybody, unfortunately, until they're ready. But people like Krista, We've got to ask. We've got to talk to them, right? Let me tell you a story about Mary. I've known Mary, I don't know, you guys, 10 years. And she is freaking cool. And we, we've even butted heads. And I introduced this to her when I was in the old company. And where her time and place was in her life was somewhere else. She had spent money on this before, uh, other things. She was into real estate herself. She had done some things uh, financially that were successful in real estate. Um, uh, her own perspective of what she did and didn't know was, was different, right? And we've always kept in touch. And we've talked about, thank you, you're welcome. Um, that's awesome, you guys, I love the comments. We talked about here and there, off and on. She brought me deals. We tried to work out a couple of deals together that I could get her in. We, we worked on her house and. She had equity in her house. She wanted to save her house, wanted to sell her house. We did a lot of different conversations. For some reason, uh, not that long ago, Mary and I were talking again, and she just asked me if I'm still doing this. And I said, absolutely, come to a meeting. Right? You've got to see this firsthand. I've been trying to tell you what it's like. Come see the community. She came. She liked what she saw. In a very, very short period of time, two or three in, in touches, some, a follow-up here and there, Mary, um, Mary enrolled in the combo. The coolest thing was Mary was so excited about what she had seen in her first few events, maybe even her first event, she brought people. She brought her friends, people she cared about, people that were into real estate with her, people that were into what she was into, right? Didn't know much about Renatus, didn't know knew it that it cost money, wasn't sure what, where she was going, whether she was even gonna do it, what level she was gonna do it at or anything like that. But she brought her friends with her. 
And two of them enrolled almost immediately in the essentials. And um, timing wise, we're, we're going through a few things with both of them. And, and Don and O'Keefe are now um, have their combo orders placed and their funding on the way. And we'll both be funded somewhere within the next week for full combos and married with five star qualified. Mary's been active in the community, coming to events, and her and one of her students already, and actually one of them that rolled up is our, was already helping me with a deal, already got paid on a deal that he did with me, right? Um, acting as a realtor in this case, but uh, nonetheless, right? Now he's potentially got a listing of mine. Uh, not only is he getting the combo, and then the other guy, Don, is in a deal possibly with Mary and I that's in this flip that we're gonna be doing. Like, this is why we do it. Like that was 10 years in the making. And in the last two months, more crap has happened with Mary and this Renata's business than had happened in the last 10 years. More good crap, exciting stuff, right? And these guys are cool dudes. Like they're a, a blessing to this team. I could go on with the stories. Tyler Mead says, what do you say is the best way to increase your confidence, confidence to talk to people, getting over that fear to talk and share with others? This is a fantastic question. Number one is give yourself some credit folks on this call. There are 69 people on this call right now. And you guys are fortunate in my opinion, because number one is you guys are listening girls to our getting on the calls and you're listening. So you know more than you think you know. You have been listening to Michael and Dane, two of the top people in the country, myself and Christian, uh, Christian Sather, pit members, also in the top in the country, right? So um, you've been listening to us train, guest trainers as well, let alone your own local events and your own local teams, right? And your own five stars. So you have what it takes to get over this. Now, the answer to this question, Tyler, is that spoon, right? Like I picture a little plastic blue or pink spoon for some reason when, when Ross was talking last night on that episode. And I'd seen the episode before, but I hadn't seen it in a long time. And, and uh, some people might see it as like a regular spoon or, or one of those silver collector spoons, you know, whatever. But I just see it as these little plastic spoons. And, and the reason they all have a different flavor and you want to taste all the flavors of life, of women or of men or, you know, whatever you're into. Uh, but when it comes to your Renata spoons, right, and the people that are going to enroll, whether they enroll the first time, Keo Jones, boom, five minutes into our follow-up, we're putting it, we're calling up the credit card companies to extend. She saw one meeting, right? She was ready, willing, and able. Um, Mary took 10 years, right? It, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever the flavor of the spoon is, you get to test it. Here's, here's the answer. Getting over your fear to talk to people is knowing that the feeling that Ross got when all he did was ask if it was possible for him to call her possibly, maybe, and ask her out in the future. It was a stepping stone. It was the start of a long 10-year relationship with Rachel right? And there were ups and downs, but he got the feeling and the hope that he hadn't had in a long time. And, and the rejection, the, the loss of his wife, the fact that she moved out and married a, a girl or got together with a girl and, and, and all the stuff withered away. And, and he was inspired and reinvented and, and excited again. And he got back on the horse. And that's what gets you over it, is the yes, right? If you have a win and you talk to someone and someone says, yeah, here's my number, call me later, that's a win. It's not a win you're going to shout to the rooftops necessarily about, but it's a win. If somebody comes to the event, that's a win. If somebody on the end of the line 
that you've, ne you've, you've only just met or you, it's a friend of yours or whatever it is, and they say, yeah, pick me up, I'll go to your stupid meeting, that's a win. Like that is gonna celebrate, that is gonna, that is gonna help you get over the fear. And eventually, sooner than later, if you do this more often than not, that you'll, the right person will come to the meeting and they will buy, they will enroll like the other 30,000 people across the country that have done it before you. It's a billion dollar a year industry. A billion dollars a year people spend on, re on real estate investing education. The people that are looking are gonna spend it somewhere. The majority of them will. 2.9 out of three people, 2.75, are interested in doing real estate. The odds of your success is good if you open your mouth and you reach for a spoon. You wanna get over that fear? Prepare. Think about today's call, re-listen to Michael's call yesterday. Prepare yourself for Thanksgiving feast. For Set a goal, five people, three people, one person. And you are not necessarily, now remember Michael said, given your atmosphere, you may be in a situation where you're gonna put the video up on, the, on and play, this, play the, the recorded epic. But most likely you're just gonna gather someone's say, and you're gonna have a conversation about this call, about Michael's call, about a deal, whatever it is. But be prepared. You wanna set yourself up for success? Test yourself on some of the questions that they might say. What have you done? How successful are you, right? All your fears that could possibly be feared and then create an outcome that you don't care. Your desired outcome is for someone to say, yeah, call me tomorrow, call me Friday. Well, I'm going shopping Friday and Saturday, call me Sunday. When's your next meeting? It's Thursday, okay, I'll call you on Tuesday, right? Whatever it is where you can qualify for the time, that's your desired outcome. A phone number or a yes to that, to that family member or friend right? It's not to close them right there. It's not to book them to an event. It's, it's whatever your desired outcome is. Simple. It's just grabbing the spoon. Would it be possible for me to call you to just share with you sometime in the near future about what I'm doing? Would that be okay, Rachel? Yeah, Ross, maybe that would be okay. And you got your spoon. And you know where your confidence goes? Through the freaking roof. Because like Tyler just said, you celebrate that. You go grab another piece of vegan turkey and you eat it with a smile on your face because you just got to lead. And then you might do it again when it comes to cranberry time or football time when you're sitting on the couch because you grabbed a spoon. Prepare for it. Make this Thanksgiving grateful for not only you, but your team, your family, your friends. Like that's how you do it, prepare for it. That's why we do it. Because the, the people that you wanna work with, that you want on your team, that you want in Renatus, are the ones that are gonna say, yeah, I'm open. I leave my options open. I'm interested. You could call me. That might be okay. All right, folks, I'm gonna give you my number, 760-533-3141. I am grateful to be able to have the opportunity to talk on this phone with you in this webinar because I learn and I get to use these same things with my people and it gets to help me. Kim, thank you so much. I love you guys and I'm excited to be here and I just love uh, listening to everybody train all week long. I love the fact that 70 people were on this call listening to me and, uh, and appreciating uh, what we've got in Renatus. And so I thank the home team. I thank Bob Snyder. I'm grateful for all of you. I'll see you on the call tomorrow. I won't see you on the call Thursday or Friday, but happy Thanksgiving. You too, Paula. Thank you, Expert Eagle. You are fantastic. I love you too. And uh, everybody else, thank you. Thank you, uh, Monica. Great. Awesome. You please Go watch the first and the last episode of <laughs> Make Me Cry. 
of, of friends. It's absolutely amazing. And listen to Michael's call again yesterday. Um, prepare yourself for Thanksgiving. And I'm telling you, you're going to have a combo by the end of the month. Um, grab your spoon, folks. Grab your spoon. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome, Robert. Thank you, guys. Make it a great Tuesday. Talk to you soon. Reach out to me if you'd like to. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Happy Thanksgiving. Be grateful. Be thankful. Pardon the turkey. <laughs>